conversation with others, as everyone now knows. So we find it um, uh, impossible to work with someone who has expressed these racist, homophobic views um, of other human beings and, uh, and is not in keeping with the ethics that we have as a company and that I and my partners have as well. But how much work in terms of, of going forward on a, on a multi-billion dollar project that we're talking about, how much work are you realistically actually doing with, with Kevin DeLeon? I mean, you know, uh, in terms of a project, uh, there are so many other moving parts. I'm just wondering whether or not uh, you end up inadvertently or otherwise harming the community that you're trying to help by building the project to begin with. Well, no, well, of course, well, the, the, um, normally in a normal development project, there would be um, some early involvement with the city council with regards to land use. In our particular case, this was a, um, a, a, a public competition where the city of Los Angeles sought out uh, proposals from a wide range of developers. And our team responded to that proposal. Ultimately, after a thorough evaluation of all the proposals, the city determined our proposal to be the best uh, proposal for the city of Los Angeles. And we then went through a negotiating process to negotiate definitive agreements based upon our proposal. While that was happening, the first council member for our district, who we were making progress with, ended up having to leave office um, as he was indicted. Then ultimately, and that seat set vacant for a while, and then uh, council member Kevin DeLeon came in, and, his, and, and what we needed from his office is to participate in the negotiating process. What most people don't understand, and it's unique to other parts of the country, is that it wasn't the mayor's office who would negotiate a development agreement in this project. It wasn't uh, the government itself. It was the council member and the chief legislative analyst of the city council that negotiated. So council member De Leon um, and, or, and any council member for that district um, played an outside role through that process. We are just about, we were just, we were getting close to completing this process, which should have taken two years and have taken five. And, and we spent about $10 million on it. Um, once, uh, once that process of the documentation has been complete, then we can move on with the development. We've already gotten entitlement, um, gone through a public process, and also signed contracts with the hotel trade union, hotel hotel employees union, and construction trade union. Okay, Mr. Peoples, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time today. Our are done. We are done. The founder of the People's Corporation. Well, coming up, a head of lettuce has outlasted the Prime Minister of Great Britain. You may be thinking, huh? We'll explain. <laughs> right now, though, explaining the news and brief, here's Karen Adams. Thanks, Charles. Things are really messed up right now in the LAX area because that's where a high-speed chase ended with a pit maneuver by the CHP. Now, this is all happening near the entrance of the airport on westbound Century Boulevard and northbound Sepulveda Boulevard also impacted. Now, this guy was running from San Diego County and he wound up all the way here in LA. After the pit maneuver, he jumped out of his car and is now perched on a K-rail on the transition road. And it's a pretty long drop, a drop for him. And we hear that the fire department is heading there to deploy some airbags. Right now, it's a standoff. And our Tom Tran will have more in traffic in just a minute. Now, a just released study says even low-level gas leaks from kitchen stoves in California can create potentially hazardous concentrations of cancer-causing benzene. Our Margaret Carrero says researchers find the highest uh, benzene levels in the North San Fernando and the Santa Clarita Valleys. The study's maximum benzene concentration was found in the region, a level roughly 30 times greater than the statewide average, according to the nonprofit research institute PSE Health Energy. Dr. Ronald Tang is a hematologist oncologist with Beverly Hospital. With uh, benzene exposure, some acute symptoms could be nausea, dizziness, as well as some fatigue. If you smell the gas, you start 
thoughts of feeling this way, I would go to an urgent care immediately. He says even a small fraction of benzene exposure can increase your health risk for blood cancers such as leukemia. When we as scientists work with benzene for chemical experiments and everything, it's always done under a chemical hood, and we always use, uh, you know, equipment in terms so that we don't inhale it. Back in 2015, the massive Aliso Canyon natural gas leak in Porter Ranch spewed tons of methane and other gases, including benzene, for several months before the well was sealed. Margaret Carrero, KNX News, 97.1 FM. It's 1.35, KNX in depth, back in just a moment, but first let's check those roads with Tom Tran and that messy situation at the airport and understand those airbags are there now. Yeah, those airbags have been deployed for about uh, 20 minutes now. Firefighters are uh, below the situation. So, uh, again, as we've been telling you, this was a pursuit that started in the San Diego area, made its way all the way up towards LAX. Very dangerous driver swerving in and out of lanes, almost taunting CHP for a while. But the pursuit ended in the worst possible place, which is the ramp from Sepulveda Boulevard to Century Boulevard heading to LAX, which means the tunnel underneath the runway where everybody's taking to get to LAX, just a mess right now. Uh, it's You can't take that ramp, obviously, because that's where the police situation is it's still happening. So if you're trying to get to LAX, use Aviation Boulevard north to Century, go westbound from there, you can get to the airport. But that ramp is absolutely shut down uh, and while crews deal with this situation. But uh, we will keep an eye on this for now. But uh, again, if you're heading to LAX, if you know someone going to LAX, avoid Sepulveda Boulevard at all costs right now. Northbound side of the 57, we still have the Sigler in place. The ramp from the 57 northbound to the west 60 will be shut down until 530 because of an overturned big rig landed on its side. Now, considering how many ramps have been shut down, this could be far worse than it is. But uh, the North 57 slows just before Diamond Bar Boulevard. If you exit off the freeway, Tonner Canyon, use Beverly, or use, uh, Be use Bray Canyon up to Diamond Bar Boulevard. You get back out of the 57 at Grand, you'll be clear of the slowing. The westbound 60 ramp to the south 57 was also sh shut down for a little while, but it looks like they've reopened that. The 71 also jammed up in both directions. The northbound side slows at the 60, the southbound side busy from the 10. Get your next report. 145, the Simpson Automotive Group, 24 hour traffic center. This is KNX in depth with Chris Edens. I'm Charles Phelps. You're feeling a little down about the state of American politics, governance in this country as of late. You could always look across the Atlantic to Great Britain to see a country that is likely much worse right now. Liz Truss, the conservative prime minister, remember she took over from Boris Johnson just a few weeks ago at that meeting with the Queen just before the Queen passed away. Well, she managed to make it just 45 days in office, resigning this morning. Britain's politics and the economy both spiraling right now. And most of the chaos can be uh, traced back to the infamous Brexit vote back, Brexit vote back in uh, 2016. Well, and things get even weirder than that because uh, <laughs> Boris Johnson, uh, who resigned about six weeks ago, at least some people think he may be one of the candidates to be the next prime minister. And on top of all of that, I kind of let his one to explain <laughs> that. <laughs> we hope is Darren Adam, who is a friend of in-depth and presenter on the Britain's conservative uh, uh, conservative. No, uh, no, 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 conversation radio. <laughs> that will be the meme, Charles, that's yeah. what you've done. There it is. Yeah, I know. I, hi, Darren. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> hi. Listen, I'm, I'm really glad that we're once again fulfilling what seems to be our constitutional duty of amusing Americans when yes. they feel sad about the state of their politics. But we, God, we really are, aren't we? I mean, it feels like about 15 minutes ago that I was last on this show talking about the selection of Liz Truss, but as you say, 45 days and gone. She becomes the shortest uh, lived, politically speaking, Prime Minister in British history by a considerable margin. No one else even comes close. And what you say about Boris Johnson is interesting. We might get into the weeds on this a little bit, but the Conservative Party election to replace Liz Truss is again split into two parts. The members of Parliament and then the wider Conservative Party membership. Now, the MPs Essentially, we think uh, roughly 100 MPs will have to nominate their favoured candidate. So if Johnson doesn't get to 100 of his party of 330 or whatever, then he doesn't go forward to the final ballot. If he does, however, then it's just possible the Conservative Party membership 
are sufficiently disconnected from reality and morality 